G'day guys. Um, Sam Sung actually asked me about alpha ketoglutarate. Um, and this was in the in regards to the stuff that I was doing up about the fat genes and stuff like that. So I didn't really get why um, what it had to do with those videos. But anyway, um, it's probably something that I've never really shown a lot of interest. But uh, I've just realized that there's a lot of people out there that actually supplement this sort of stuff and all that. And it's sort of heavily promoted on a, quite a few sites. I did a bit of a Google search and I'm going, hmm. So that was a bit uh, a bit strange. Um, I'm aware of it. It's basically just a, a rate limiting um, molecule um, of the Krebs cycle. So so basically, um, it's basically synthesised uh, from alanine, which is sort of considered a non essential amino acid. Uh, the funny thing is when you actually look at the most of the sites, like the one that I'm going to just show now, they always go, oh, it's done, it's created, it's synthesized by non-essential amino acids, but they don't tell you which one. You know, I'm going, and they usually are selling supplements. I'm going, oh, not surprising. Why would you promote animal foods, which are very high in alanine? No, just let's promote supplements, which is the typical sort of thing that you get on most websites, um, they tell you half truths um, or hide the, uh, the actual foods that can actually pr provide, furnish your body with those non-essential amino acids, which are sort of semi-essential as you're getting older um, and even more because it's just harder and harder to obtain through synthesis. There's more senescent cells are built up in the system. Your system start breaking down, they're less efficient. And as they're less efficient, you require more from the diet, like taurine biosynthesis goes down. A lot of other things start declining with age. So as with age, you know, animal foods become far more important um, in that regard. This is why it's not an option for older people. It's a necessity. And it's the reason why, you know, bone mineral density and uh, general, general muscle sarcopenia and other things like that start uh, manifesting itself, especially in populations which are depriving themselves from sufficient protein. I mean, my sort of attitude is one gram of protein for every inch of height, which basically means that if you're 180 centimetres or around close to six foot, just slightly um, less than six foot, 183, let's just go to six foot, then basically you need 183 um, for optimal levels of protein. Um, now, people disagree with that for whatever reason, because in many cases they're crackpots, or they just focus on the RDIs. The RDIs are way too low. The RDIs cover basically the general requirements to prevent, you know, general muscle breakdown. That's just absurd, you know? So that's not the level we should be targeting, you know, the 0 0.8, far too low. Um, so when we're looking at protein, you don't only require protein just for structural purposes. You require basically for a number of other components. There are a whole lot of transcripted proteins in the, in the cells. There are sort of metallotransporters in the gut. There's a whole lot of other transporters and um, catalyzing enzyme, enzymatic proteins in the body. So there's a whole lot of different proteins um, as little machines, biological machines made of protein that go around doing a whole lot of biological processes. And they, yes, they do require cofactors, but a nutrient dense animal based diet usually tends to be very high in micronutrients and tends to require far less because when you have, you're furnishing the body with sufficient amino acids of all sorts, the, the body pretty much, 
you know, can put things together pretty, pretty well. When you give it inefficient levels and it's reliant on a very poor um, plant-based nutrition or whatever, then it's very hard to extract sufficient protein and sufficient other things. And there is far more energy involved, which is a cost burden to the body. So there's a whole lot of downsides in that regard. And when you're trying to extract more and you're using that energy rather than using it to repair your own tissue as you're getting older, you're going to be aging faster. And that's just one factor in the aging process combined the high deuterium in plant foods or in supplements. You know, you know, I need to emphasize the supplemental side. Supplements are high in deuterium loads because of the processing and manufacturing process. You know, deuterium concentrations go up. High deuterium, especially the further away from the tropics and the less capacity you've got from UV to deuterium deplete at 19 parts per million per hour in the sun with most of your body exposed. It's unlikely that most people are going to do that. So there's a whole lot of factors, let alone expose their body sufficiently to extract um, you know, direct from, um, from actual light, photonic energy at the mitochondrial level. But that's, for, that's another discussion um, for another day. So which you get about a third of your energy. I've discussed this before. Now, when we're looking at basically these sort of things, we should look at the best sources. And the best sources are animal sources and always have been and always will. So let's just take a bit of a squeeze at this piece of nonsense. Okay. So just to just to re just to recap for all of us to remember, the Sam basically said, well, you know, because he was interested in probably supplemental or some stuff like that. I said, yep. Alpha ketoglutarate is important for muscle protein synthesis. You know, it's a main rate limiting molecule, a thing in the TCA cycle. So the Krebs cycle, citric cycle, whatever you want to bloody call it. There's the, what is it called? The isocitric uh, D. I can't remember it exactly. It's a part of where it's that rate limiting thing. Um, anyway. And it's very important um, for the you know, the energy production, it, you know, it can have a limit. It can put out a limiting effect. Um, so, so it's very important um, in the body and our major source is alanine. So that's the key thing. Now we'll get onto this, just the background sort of stuff. Now we'll get onto this part. So this is some website, it's called Very Well Health bit of a bullshit um, website, but anyway, we'll just take a look at what they're talking about. As you can see, lo and behold, shit loads of supplements. Doesn't surprise me. I suspect they will be high in deuterium, which will, will not be beneficial long-term for your mitochondria, especially if you're further away from the tropics and you're consuming too many supplemental things and other things that are high in deuterium. So anyway, Enhance athletic performance metabolism. Ah, yes. So they sort of go into this um, alpha keto glutaric acid, which is another name for it, is a biological component um, which is synthesized from alanine in the body. So you can't eat it. Found naturally in the human body, plays a key role. It actually plays a great limiting role in the Krebs cycle, not a key role, a rate limiting role, not enough of it. And you're not gonna basically, you know, get enough energy to very important. So in a series of chemical reactions used to release stored energy. Oh, thank you. So 
we won't talk and uh, rather in here it is synthesized from non-essential amino acids that the body produces from its own cells i would love to know what they are it is also available in dietary supplements am i surprised shocked you know so you know includes a role in regulating the immune system bone development blah 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 blah, blah. yes a very important for muscle protein synthesis obviously if you've got a rate limiting effect you know if you don't get enough um or synthesize because you're not feeding your body appropriately you know things will go to shit you know obviously all these sort of things chronic kidney disease cataracts large liver um, osteoporosis um you know even yeast infections all sorts of things now why does that surprise me you know it doesn't surprise me the funny thing is down here they talk about chronic kidney disease <laughs> they talk about a study i'm not going to go into it this is for another day um alpha ketoglutaric acid has been used since the late 1990s to help break down and absorb protein in people with hemodialysis who require a low protein diet. No, they fucking don't. They require a high animal diet to support. This is the reason why people that go on a high animal diet actually restore kidney function. Like my father. I mean, he had sort of, you know, precancerous lesions and stuff like that. We we're concerned about that, but things have improved. And I've got, got him on a high protein diet. And I've actually demonstrated, you provide, you get rid of the sugars that are causing the glycating effects and the problems, and you eliminate those nasties, those seed oils, those trans fats, and the glycating sugars, and pretty much that extra protein will work because that protein is high because they promote plant-based protein, which is low in alanine, where animal-based protein is high, providing the support. This is why I remember the study that I did about kidney diseases and the, you know, the mice that were the literally equivalent to a 33-year lifespan of a human, which is basically what we call one generation of humans or one generation of rats for one year on very high protein. All that happened is the body was excessively lean at 70% protein, really trim and very healthy, very large and big and strong, as you would expect a strong animal with a lot of protein. And at the same time, the kidneys were just enlarged and healthy. Why? because they had the right sort of food and they work much better and more efficient. So we know that people that are on dialysis usually have smaller kidneys. I wonder why, because they atrophy and they deteriorate. That is why protein, animal protein does the opposite. So let's get that through our thick skulls, please. So, and we know that they actually supplement these people. Why, don't, why not the fuck? Just give them high alanine foods that can furnish this rate limiting effect. If you don't have enough, because these people are on low protein, they've probably been on sad diets for a year, undernourished un in terms of protein, deficient in protein like most of the population is, and basically deteriorating and breaking down. Their bones are breaking down, their backs are breaking down, their, um, their hips are breaking down, everything's breaking down. Why? Because they're not getting enough protein. That's why you look at these, the Messiah and all these other ancestral populations. I mean, look at Mary. She couldn't keep up with an 80 year old running up a hill, a Messiah. That tells you everything. These people are hitting a high protein diet, no sugar, high protein. And you know what? They're strong up until their 80s and beyond. And it's usually some communicable disease or some in the environment or a scratch that gives them a nasty infection or a cut where they bleed to death or whatever that usually kills them or they die in their sleep but they don't die from these what we call diseases of civilization chronic diseases sickly 
sick into old age with a bag full of medicine and basically, you know, with low quality of life. Eat your fucking meat and have good quality of life is the golden rule. Now, so they use it for people with kidney disease. Why don't you fucking eat it? Anyway, so then gastrointestinal issues. Again, let's supplement. Oh, why not? Athletic performers, let's fucking supplement. And I'm not going to read this garbage because I, I, it just drives me up the wall. Possible side effects from supplemental stuff. Oh, adverse after three years use. It's probably going to be some nausea and stuff like that, which usually is with all bloody supplements. I won't go into them. I'm not going to waste my time. Um, you know, the sort of dosages that they're looking at, ranging dosages up to three milligrams. That's just, you know what three milligrams is? This amount here, three, sort of, sorry, three grams, 3,000 milligrams, three grams, is 150 grams of steak, of beef. That's it. That's what it is. Why the fuck would you buy an expensive supplement when you can have a beautiful, juicy steak? You can even get more. I usually have about 600. So guess how much I'm having at 600? So is that calculator going to come up? Yes, it is. About freaking time. So about, around about, it's about two grams, just a bit more than that. For rough gear, you know, six times 12 grams. Fuck. That's four times, isn't it? So, yeah, why would you bother? basically. But if you're a population eating a kibble diet and you're absolutely deficient with all the health problems and underperformance and can't get your dick up and whatever else, because you're basically don't have animal nutrition to make you strong and tough, you basically are uh, degenerating rapidly and they will give you something like this as a supplement. Don't waste your money. You can get shitloads from meat. And I will demonstrate this shortly now just let's go into this for a sec so let's look at some other studies oh wonderful okay so okay supplemental how much in terms of muscle endurance and all that six grams per day for seven days you know six grams and oh, this study you can get up to you know all of them are six six and a half and all that just shows how how poor people are eating anyway but they're getting good results can you imagine if you have a big steak a juicy steak the sort of results you'll get on double or triple or you know quadruple the the, the stuff that they're using in these studies you know this is why the old bodybuilders of steak and eggs were so tough as nails, you know, they weren't falling apart or dying very young like the current crop are. If they were living into old age, the last one, a very popular one that I've talked about, died at 98. And only when he gave up bodybuilding and took up marathon running at his age, which is very catabolic and broke down his body. Yes, he got convinced to go plant based and give up bodybuilding and died a few years later from 95 when he last competed as a bodybuilder, a traditional bodybuilder, not these modern day bodybuilders that are shooting up anabolic steroids, insulin, and all sorts of other crap and causing their body all sorts of unusual growths and dying young, okay? And using a whole lot of crappy supplements damaging their mitochondria. We don't want to do that. We want to eat good animal foods. So I'll pin this. Anybody can go and take a look at it. I'm not going to waste my time. Um, this is not a bad site that I found that gives a bit of information. Foods containing alanine can help strengthen our muscles, obviously, because they are supporting the Krebs cycle. 
and the general energy production, which helps with all this sort of stuff, and muscle protein synthesis and many other things. Regulate our blood sugar levels and quickly provide, not that we've got a problem being on a low carbohydrate type style of eating, and quickly provide energy for our bodies. Oh, we need that energy, yes, yes, give us that energy, support that TCA cycle, that Klebs cycle. Anyway, the foods that contain it, the one of the highest in the terms of food, um, this fish called haddock. Um, if you're into that sort of stuff, I do like fish. Uh, mackerel is another good source, but beef loin beef is better. Remember, it's two point two grams point zero one four per 100, which is three and a half ounces. So a 600, come over here, 600 divided by 28 point three, we're talking about 21.2 ounces for 12 grams of the shit, exactly. Which is four times what is usually in those supplements. We don't eat supplements if you're on a carnival diet, if you're on a meat heavy diet of any sort of low carbohydrate diet, on a species appropriate diet, you will do better. Don't listen to the crackpots, let alone your insulin to glucagon will remain low, which is where we want it. Remember, insulin to glucagon is 1.3, just slightly above the 0 0.8 of fasting you do not have these excessive types of growth factors in the system. We don't want these. We want enough for muscle protein synthesis, but no more. So our sort of diet, minus the sugar, without the sugar in it, basically makes it superior because it keeps those excess growth pathways under control, just to the level we require to basically support normal biological functions, good healthy biological functions, and keep the blood sugars at that low, at that natural low level of around four millimoles, um, or the, which is, you know, in the sort of 60s, I, I believe. And pork's not too bad, 1.4. As you can see, soybeans are the only plant-based thing that has any bit and it's only when it's processed you may get a bit more out of it but it's pretty low gotta eat a lot to get half a decent amount and remember like all proteins from plant sources the utilization is half if if that compared to so the bioavailability is low in plants so it's about the 70 odd percent you take in so you're not taking the full amount so even though that says of that amount, you're only taking in about of that amount, okay? And the utilization is half. So when you're comparing it, you're comparing it half, the utilization of an animal-based um, protein. So it's more like having that amount at 100 grams, okay? So it's quite bloody low when you look at it in terms of utilization and bioavailability. So always remember that where the animal based one is about that from beef, nearly two grams in terms of bioavailability. Because, and if it's from eggs, it's 100%, from dairy, 100%. I've discussed that before in terms of bioavailability. Just reminding that even when you see, you may be a kibble eater and you see that sort of stuff, you say, oh, I can get some if I eat shitloads of soybean. You're not gonna get much, believe me. And you'll have to eat so much, you'll have problems shitting it all out. You can't do that on a daily basis, my dear. That is why they supplement, obviously. That is why they recommend it. That is why that site recommends supplementation because 
that. It's the only fucking way they can get enough. And even then, the bioavailability we know of the supplemental form is the same as the plant form, getting it from the plants. It's half the normal that of animal sources. Why? Because it just is, you know, because it's processed and altered. Anyway, chicken, not too bad. Shrimp's not too bad. Um, you know, lentils and lima beans, fairly low, lima beans especially. So as you can see, there's not much bar some of the, you know, soy lentils, um, lima beans, forget it. It's just too low. Beans are too low. So lentils and probably soy is the only real pretty vegan. Basically just not enough. They need to supplement um, or basically get on a species appropriate diet, the idiots. So pretty much that. Now, when we look at eggs, that's two eggs. So 100 grams of boiled eggs will basically give you, in terms of alanine, 0.7. So it's nearly, so two, four eggs, um, which is what I recommend today, is about 1.4, which 1.4 1, 1 grams, pretty good. Add that to your meat, perfect. So now the big one, gelatin. Gelatin per 100 has about 8.8 .8 grams per 100 grams. So it has shit loads. Obviously, you can't eat too much gelatin. And if you eat it in a powdered form, if you don't use it, it'll turn into oxalate in a lot of people. So it can be a problem. But if you get it in the right form, which is in the, in the animal form, contained properly and then utilised properly in a rate-limiting way, you know, then you're not going to have that problem. Now, the best sources are Voila, voila, pig skin, one of my favorites. So materials used for the production, obviously. Bourbon hides, boons, and others. So usually you'll find shitloads of gelatin um, in pigs. There's also connective tissue, um, stuff like that. So those are the different sources. Let's just stop this so please don't waste your money on supplementing so akg is an expensive supplement it's a waste of money like all other supplements you can get it through animal foods more than enough you know have a eat a big steak every day give you're getting plenty you know a couple of eggs to boot you know there is zero requirement and at the end of the day you know, when we talk about a, the Krebs cycle there's a rate limiting there is a certain level that can actually be utilized beyond that it's a waste of time you can supplement a thousand grams I don't care what amount you do there's only a certain amount you're going to uptake because the whole machinery only works at a certain speed can't remember exactly but you know so you're going to get more than enough from animal foods do not waste your time, Sam, and anyone else that is basically being told the great things of using such a supplement as alpha keto um, uh, glutarate. You know, they go, oh, you've got to get this stuff. It's fantastic. It's so good for your health and all that. Just eat a fucking steak. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. See you. Bring it back and knocking the BS for six. I actually should use a cricket bat. <laughs> Here you go.